Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art chirp, and today we're going to practice a mystery skill. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. So uh, I have a very involved class coming up uh, with uh, 32 watercolor techniques in one video. And um, that kind of changed my schedule out a little bit because that video is just going to be so spectacular. And I realized that we could get together today and practice a basic core watercolor skill together with our round brush. And I thought we would work on botanicals. Ah. The textures, because it's a very core kind of like that leaf stroke, doing stems, doing loose flowers. Those are all things. And it's always a good idea to just step back every once in a while and just sort of practice different types of greenery and flowers. You can make patterns. Um, gosh, there's about a million watercolors out there selling their patterns right now. So I guess this is a whole business, mm. uh, you know, which is kind of cool. Anytime artists make bank, I actually think it's awesome. <laughs> like for whatever reason john and i talk about the moral and ethical you know ramifications of nfts and all this stuff and uh well just personally just so you know i don't i'm not for net nfts i'm not gonna offer them to my community because i i don't think that they are a valid collector space um i'm not sorry that some artists got a bazillion million dollars from it mm -hmm. not sorry at all artists need to get ahead sometimes <laughs> You know, so I'm like, I'm like, win, and Christy's backing you up, too. All right, so that's what we're going to do today is leaves, leaves. And flowers, and we're going to use a round brush, and we're going to do it till these brush strokes become easier and uh, uh, more natural and organic to just what we're doing. Perfect. Yeah, that's what we do. And then next week, we're going to, like, do 32 basic techniques where you're going to be like, what? And then, then we can do more advanced stuff. Ooh, that sounds good. You ready and to then, go? I'm ready to go. All right, so we're going to be doing ground brushes today. I've got my little Jasper Stardust out. I've got my number 16 Soft Aqua by Raphael, which is like my go-to brush. What was that? That was mm, you in the virtual space of you. <laughs> I also have a Corel. So these are different brushes that you can use. You can use just any brush that you have. They don't, even for this work, have to be pricey. I think one of the important things to realize with watercolors is that while quality does matter, and I'm going to be painting on 140 pound watercolor paper today, I thought I'd throw you a different one and show you. I'm always saying you can use Strathmore, but here I am using Strathmore. I have 10 of these pads here. I don't make the stuff up, as you will see in my upcoming art haul. <laughs> You'll be like, oh, she's really got a, she's really got a thing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our, our brush wet, right? Okay. And our nice big mid-size, you can use any one that you've got. And we're going to begin just with uh, some stems and some leaves and how we do that in watercolor. So let's get out. Let's be very literal here. And I'm going to get out some of my phthalo green, right, as you do. And I'm going to get out some of my nickel ozo yellow, as you also do. Get a couple of little ranges of colors to start from. Get some quinacridone gold over here. The gold deep is very nice into the green, I find. There we go. I'm just getting myself some greens to start with. I have to tell you, I won't stay very literal for a long time. So I'm going to get my brush moderately wet, which means it's not dripping. I'm not going to get a bunch of water out of it when I touch it. It's holding its mid-range of water. And I'm going to go ahead and get a little green loaded on here. Let's come over here. I'm going to kind of probably work from left to right and then back across just so John knows so he can be all close up in, on what we're doing. I was going to just try to come over here so that I can get them vertical to see what they're doing. Okay. Let me bit. see if I'm, am I anything else on your way? Am, nope, am I good? good? Okay. I think it's got it. So we're going to just take our brush and we're going to um, do a very light little curve line. Maybe another little one here. That's a nice stem to begin with. Random decisions that we've made. Maybe we come in here and uh, take one in an opposite direction so it has a nice kind of way to go. So here we go. We've got this stem. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come out a little bit on the toe of your brush. See that? And you're going to press down and release. Maybe going to come here and go out a little bit. You see I got a slightly darker green. Press down and release. Sometimes you'll find that you have it better. And you'll be like, oh, I nailed that one. And other times you'll be like, ah. The goal is to enjoy your leaves every time. 
So see a little stem out, press down and release. You can do some really wicked uh, leaves with a dagger brush, but I think we're going to wait on the dagger. We're going to wait. No dagger. We got people. So let's come out here and just a little bit about. They're all oh. in chat. Look at them. There no. they are. Don't just watch me do this. Do this. Grab whatever pan watercolor you have, whatever paper, you, just your brush. Practice this. You can do this at any budget level. It's in any budget level. And this is a weird one. This is a very popular thing right now, decoratively, just botanicals painted on white. You can uh, make a living at this even. Look at that. We're doing some nice little sharp pointy ones. Aren't they oh, lovely leaves? Just the word botanicals makes so many Sherpaths' hearts melt. It's just nice. And it's this is a type of meditation. Oh, I got a little bit there, so I'm going to... You can see you can layer right over leaves that you already have. Look at that. I'm going to layer right over. If they're wet, they'll bloom together, which is a lovely effect. And if they're dry, they'll glaze over each other. Techniques you're going to learn about this week. Layers. Layers. Look at that. We just did leaves. We just leaf up the whole. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, we are we leafing did. today? We're probably going to be leafing a bit today. There's a there's a couple ways to get our leaves, and we're probably going to be leafing a bit today. Let's get into our orange. That's a pretty unexpected direction to go. And I'm going to come here. Make a little stem and come up. Come around and join in. Come here and make a little stem. And join in. Everybody is what? You can see right up here in chat. Oh, hey, everybody. They're ready layer one. They're ready layer one. I'm going to get a little more yellow and maybe uh, come in and do another little stem over here. And, and I'll come from the left this time. A little bit of yellow. And then kind of come back down. Yeah, we're just joining them together and we leave that little white in the middle. Sometimes without a stem. Sometimes you can come back in when you have something like this and then you stem later and you allow it to bloom. That's cool. As you want. It's about, you know, balancing these little light lines with these little heavy lines. Aren't they great? They really are. Fun stuff. So, I mean, let us I was not kidding about doing a lot of leaves. we got to do a lot of leaves. I'm going to uh, continue to come across here. And let's practice making the leaf with a downward stroke. And come up here and kind of make a little point. There we go. That's a little different. Has a bit of a different shape to it, doesn't it? It's a bit like what we do a lot on my uh, acrylic channel, isn't it? We're almost getting kind of a little flower here. I go come and get some green as I'm coming down. Now I'm going to come into my green and uh, maybe some of my quinacridone gold together. Everyone's really enjoying this because it you know, gives them some little bit of homework so they can work on specific skills. You got to work on the skills. I got a little stem here. I'm going to come up from the bottom a little bit. Just press down and come up.
enough. If you want to work on Pacific skills, you would just do all West Coast plants. Right. California poppies. Mm, yep. Oh, ice plant. Ice plant. Very good plant to do. That would be and like. See, we're just going through there and we're just adding that. Now, the way the water is purling on this paper, that's about the sizing on this paper. So you can see why normally I Fabrion. Oh. But in blocks at the cost, this is the easiest one to use at this price point. Yep. A lot of times that's what it is. It's not perfect. It's just the best at the price point. Jenna says, Jen says, I love the skill building exercise videos. They're just good, man, because we got to build up them skills, right? Let's make some leaves here. Let's pull some kind of longer stroke. I've got skills. Got ping pong skills and Dungeons and Dragons skills and some Kung Fu skills. I got all kinds of skills. I think it's good to get, you know, paint in and grab different colors. Let them all bloom together. Right, doing that, getting a few little things. Now, you can come in and you can do a fun thing. Let's get some, you know what? I know everybody loves to do red, but I'm going to do yellow. I'm going to get some Hansa yellow. And we may switch it over to red, but I, I want to start with something yellow. And then we'll see if we can see it. And if we can't see it, I'll, I'll be back over here. We're going to come here and we're going to press down and kind of curl in. Ooh, that's very yellow. And kind of meet another little friend there. The yellow has it. Curl this. Make another little friend there. Leaving that kind of white in the center. And come here and maybe make a smaller kind of version of that. We'll pull in. These are loose little flowers. You get asked a lot. How do you do loose little flowers? You eat here. You know, I'm little I'm touches. Na I'm Napoleon Dynamite to your Pedro. <laughs> Vote for Pedro. <laughs> oh, let's get some yellow in there. Got the hair. Every way we change a little bit, it just feels like a different flower because you're just really painting the shape, right? Those are very yellow. They're very yellow. Very. Everyone's like, wow, that's yellow. But that is, uh, if you want to know why that's so yellow, that is the Hansa Yellow Medium from Core. That is oh. the best of the Hansas. In all the watercolors is the core one. It's just the most pigmented. Super pigmented. Right? Now, we could absolutely come in with some green leaves and stuff like that. But let's do a little bit of the French. What's that? I'm going to come in and get a little bit of my uh, ultramarine blue and my thalo blue together. Mix them kind of in a mid-range. That's always fun. And come in and come down underneath this flower. Make little tiny delicate stems. I'm going to touch. And when you touch, what happens is that you get a little bit of a. That's so cool. A bloom in the flower. All right, so we've got that. Now I can come here and. And then some little leaf work, right? Roll that out there. Isn't this a lovely little pattern? It's a lovely little botanical. That's so cool. I've not seen this assemblage before. Well, because we're making it up as we go. I think I would like more of these in my studio. Oh, like personally? Yes. Okay, I know we should got all the Ghostbuster stuff. That's that. That's man, and maybe 
What's wrong with that? <laughs> I'm going to get a little my ultramarine. And you can see when you mix the phthalo and the ultramarine blue, you get kind of a nice little... Run of leaves. Let's look at that little botanical run. We're practicing. Oh, thank you, Farah. Look at this. It's just chill stuff. You, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. You're doing this because moderator Cad Red Donna was doing this the other day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what you doing? And she's like, I'm just working on this. And I was like, you know, yes, exactly what you should be doing is working on these basic strokes and getting comfortable and confident with your brushes. Let's, uh, I'm going to do, this one is natural hair, so I've been using synthetics. Let's see how it would be different with a natural hair. I'm going to come in and get a little bit of my uh, burnt umber and my quinacridone gold and say my green to start. We'll get kind of a dark color. All I right. think I've got room here. And I'm going to come in on the toe of this little brush. I'm going to make a very little kind of organic bit of line. As you do. Let me make sure I've got lots of things. So I'm gonna do my leaves here, but they're gonna be a little different. They're gonna they're gonna be smaller and more dagger like. And run them out. See how this plant has a much more tight structure. Now, if your surface was more absorbent, would it not bead as much? It wouldn't bead at all. In fact, I'm going to switch over to my Fabrion in a second. Ah. Uh -huh. So spoiled on my Fabrio. That's okay. We know where it's made. It's the sizing. As you come down here, you can make little sprigs that come out and it sort of thickens. Okay, that's lovely. While it's all still wet, I'm going to come in and get some of my ultramarine blue and some of my quinacridone together. And touch out loose little flowers. All tucked in. It's tiny, but it's the same type of little strokes. Isn't that fun? That's amazing. Let's do this all day. Some days are mushroom days. Some days are feather days. Some days are eucalyptus days. Eucalyptus is its own. You could do a day of eucalyptus. I can imagine. Because they're so round. And you know what? I'm going to do this again on my Fabriano so you guys can see the difference. Um, yeah, we got time. You guys are up for hanging. I don't mind uh, showing you how the Fabriano is different. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not plugging them for any other reason than it is different. I have a whole new, I, I popped one from the, um, uh, when you, on the art shipper retreats, everybody paints on Fabriano. And that's why. I'm going to do this exact one again so you can see. I think this one came out, uh, the yellow came out super perfect. Sometimes you can get into like, a, maybe like a pink or something. All right, let's see what it's like on the Fabriano, shall we? All right, let's look at there. We're going to look real close. It's still a lovely little flower. It's still a fun little flower, but let's see what it is on the Fabriano. I'm going to put this up so I know what I was doing. Otherwise, I'll do a whole nother flower. Because, you know, it's very stream of consciousness. There we go. I'm going up here. 
Fabriano, 140 pound watercolor paper. I love you so much, and now you're about to see why. We'll start out with another little, little, little guy here, right? Just so we can kind of compare the whole difference. Oh, well, that's like. And I'll show you side by side. And I'm not, I'm not shading anybody. Because again, Strathmore at the price point for a block. You can even see kind of uh, the brush stroke even a little better. See where I just pull out and release the leaf, pull out and release. You know, it pops in beautifully. Sometimes you'll be going along, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you. <laughs> you're perfect. Looks great. So you can really see. Two things. That I've got to tighten up my left-hand side. My left-hand directionality needs to tighten up a bit. And my paper is much, much better. But I super get it. Like the list on this paper block, I mean, you can get it for somewhat reasonable, but the list on this paper block is like very high. Where I mean, it feels high. List is just a suggestion, just so you know. I never want you guys to ever pay list. Okay, so uh, Staline was saying, I've been using the Fabriano flat pad for practice and swatching. You can make it into a block by taking soft acrylic gel and painting it on the sides except for one section and weighing it down. Now, that is exactly how you make a pad. And I might even suggest that if you go onto the Amazons, you can buy what's called padding compound. <laughs> it's very cheap. Um, it's like probably, you know, a Amazon prices. So, I mean, like a $5 container, maybe $15. But it's cheap no matter what you're talking about. Very cheap material. Yeah, you just got to watch those Amazon prices because sometimes when something is popular, yeah, you know, it goes up. I got to actually make sure that our listings aren't set like that. <laughs> I was just having a panic attack today. But yeah, the best thing to do when you're when you're padding something uh, is a couple chunks of sacrificial wood because you're going to get padding compound pound on it, and then some heavy books. Stack it on a, you'll. I mean, like, and this is super basic. Uh, like art school kind of stuff. So a lot of there's a lot of material out there that you can learn. You can see about how to make a pad. So just Google how to make a pad. They'll like super standard stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's groups for binding. Yeah, and if it's a whole community. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, you can use PVA glue. It it the but for the cost, the the actual padding compound is really cheap. It's just. And it works super well, like two, three coats and bang. It's like that rubbery stuff that you would expect. And you can see I've got lots of little leaves here. And I'll come back in and uh, do some flowers. Did you know I have a padding station? I did know you have a padding station. That lives with you. <laughs> Gigantic. It is. He makes uh, uh, pads for the kids all the time. Oh, I'm not. That's the little one. No. I have a big one in the garage. They go touch and pull in. I don't know how much you can zoom in on this. They can see the little. How much do you want me to zoom in? 
much as you can so they can see how the little... Well, we'll stop like at some reasonable... Because oh, there we go. That's it perfect. Starts, it starts getting crazy when I get much more beyond the stage one up at the beginning. I gotta slow down the camera movement. See, same strokes we were doing on those big yellow flowers. We're just doing them tiny, tiny. It's all jumpy and zoom. Julie, yes, you got it exactly right. Padding compound, just like that with D's. Pad, like to make a pad. And if you want to look it up the pad making station, it's called a padding station. I know, like, not terribly uh, original or, or uh, creative. It's just like a place where you make pads. Look at us go, guys. We're just doing little flowers. And you can definitely see that there is a significant difference in quality. This is how artists get particular and weird. <laughs> You're probably wondering, like, why are artists so weird about things? This is why. Because you want things to work. You know what? Here's what it is. When you're painting, you want things to go a certain way, right? You're already concentrating enough as it is. And you, want, you don't want to be fighting anything more than your own skill set. No need to be fighting materials. Look at these loose little flowers. Darcy Coley would like to paint an African violet. Oh, my goodness. That would be a fun. That's like its own thing, isn't it? Those are the that's fuzzy got a ones. Brown leaf, and it's got a beautiful, uh, well, sometimes frilled, sometimes unfrilled purple flower, sometimes lined. They're wonderful to paint. Pansies are also wonderful to paint. Uh, then we're my... just pulling this down. You can see we're on the toe of the brush and doing little curves. It's not, not too serious. You want to see the difference? Hold on. I can't get him out. Uh, okay. So he can zoom in and uh, zoom in on that it. and then go over to that. Okay. So I'll go over here. Now I got to remember to. You can see how it's on the surface differently. Oh, yeah. So those are the differences. Yeah, it's so broken up on this one, it's hard to even see the focus is nice. Yeah. So her first piece would have come out differently. Um, if you're referring to like the first thing I painted, probably. Yeah, so Ken A uses one. He, he's done the Cranson. Or are you doing Canson or Cranson? Um, anyways, watercolor pad that's 140 pound cold press for around $11. Yeah, see the, the Strathmore is $11. And really, this stuff is by, as about sizing. Whatever sizing that is going on at the moment, that's what you're always sort of kind of playing with is the sizing of the world it's crazy because like if you go to a local art store you can buy these gigantic sheets of paper and if you're willing to cut them down it actually gets pretty cheap into getting nice paper that way but then you have to be able to like do all what you're paying for is convenience if you're just coming in right now you make light lines little bits of curve high up on your brush pull out a little stem press and pull come here maybe we got a little more pink in there oh staline you may be right that the padding compounds may not be acid free it's true the ones that I use, um, and that's a, you know, you're talking about that very edge of the surface of the uh, the paper. It can be a big deal, but only if you need things to be archival, archival, archival. But, yeah, even so, there's not going to be any pigment on that edge. It's 
you know, if when you're done, you could always just trim it off. It's a very small amount on that very edge of the paper. So, you know, it's a, it's not a, not something I would stop myself over for sure. When you let the brush get a little bit drier, kind of interesting to play with uh, those leaves oh. as well. That way. See how it happens when it's dry? Kind of a different sort of leaf. Yeah. A little bit out, just fill in space. Look at that guy, I love doing the leaves. Doing the leaves. What are we doing? We're doing the leaves because when we do the leaves and we practice in this way, when we're painting and our focus is on maybe some other element of the design, or if we're trying to do something like a pattern like we were talking about like a decorative pattern look at how you can kind of glaze over this create these uh interesting uh layers they are very very nice we're just glazing over that getting depth and now normally what i do is i do the light layers then bring the darker and darker in but you can do either way Go uh, red this time. Let's be red. Super, super red. This is interesting. Mm. So, uh, in in watercolor, do you layer like we do in oil and acrylic? Uh, no, in the exact opposite construct, and yet it's the same. So, in watercolor, the white is your paper. So you begin with your lightest values and layer up into your deepest, darkest values. And you have to constantly preserve your light values. So that's kind of what gets in our heads as, you know, maybe an acrylic artist. Is that we're, I might paint darkest to lightest in acrylic, but I'm going to do the opposite in my watercolor. I'm going to let those touch. So we're getting a little bit of a, a grouping there, right? You can even come on the centers of these if ever you want to and add dark color and let it bloom up. Sort of fun as well. Now, while all this is here, while it's all still having a moment, I want to get my yellow over to my green and get a real nice yellow green. I'm picking the yellow green because these are orange and yellow and red, and that's going to be the most harmonious. If you think the if you think of the bias as being part of the harmony. Mm. So even when you're doing colors that are maybe contrasting. You want to always kind of be thinking of Look at those nice long flowers. Nice long leaves. I like this part right here very much too. You guys love this one? I love this one. This is fantastic. Just 
Just fun, fun, fun. Look at that. And we're just playing around. We're just playing around. What kind of brush do you use for acrylics to get the same shape? If you want to get the same effect in acrylics, you want a fluid paint. That means you either have to modify your heavy body acrylic to flow more, or you want to purchase the paint that comes in the bottles like Golden's Fluid Acrylic, and a soft around brush, same shape. So yeah, that's, that's really where it is all entirely with acrylics is that the heavy body isn't going to flow off your brush in the same way. So when you're trying to get that beautiful fluid pull out, you have to thin it or purchase paint that's already in that kind of consistency. Same round brush. Nice point. Good round. Bigger than my number four, though I could do this with my number four. I could do this with my number four. Maybe I'll put that in my 32 acrylic techniques. That could <laughs> that be good. Could do. I'll show you how to do it with my like a regular round brush. All right, so we learned a little bit about paper. We did. We did, and we learned a little bit about making leaves. And so this is kind of like a hidden gem in the channel. Pass it on if everyone's like trying to do flowers, and you'll be like, oh, man, did you do the leaf course? And then it'll be like the mystery cookie. I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a thumbnail so you know what it was about. It's just hard to say. Got to make sure you post up the links so you yeah. don't leaf them hanging. I don't want to leaf you hanging. I would love to see your leaves so you can share them with me on Instagram or TikTok or Pinterest or Facebook. Um, just throw in uh, that you did the mystery video so the because the mods won't know, <laughs> right? Huh. The mods will be so confused. So like, just try to let them know it's the mystery video. If, if you forget, it's okay. Nobody's going to be mad. But that will help them approve things quicker is let them know it's the mystery video and like throw up your leaves and flowers and practice botanicals. And we'll keep doing these. Uh, what's the name of this brush for watercolor? Says Andy Jones. All right. I'm super happy to tell you this because I love this brush. This is a Raphael Soft Aqua. And it is an imitation squirrel. Normally, as you may know, well know, imitation brushes are not great. But these brushes are fantastic. Um, they hold water well. They release consistently. They come to a terrific point. They've got a variety of brushes and all of the uh, like the daggers and the brights and the washes and the quills that you might want. And um, I'm not I'm not paid to say this, though I do know everybody over there. I like well, them very much, and they've sent me do, brushes. Do you remember what Bishop said? But only because I'm obsessed with the brushes. He he preferred, you know, artificial person mm -hmm. as to synthetic, and I think they prefer artificial squirrels. Yeah. To synthetic squirrels. So it's the Raphael um check your ferrules on these make sure they're all seated that's a big problem i think with watercolor brushes in general but that that would be the thing the only like thing to watch on that and the other nice thing about the synthetic is that it holds up really well so love it love it love it and the other brush i was using was uh the jasper stardust and you can find these on instagram if you look up jasper stardust this is an escoda head but he hand turns these handles escoda is another really good brush that you can do and we haven't even gotten in the dagger. Uh, Kim, can you use these in acrylic? You could use them with a high flow or fluid acrylic, but I would then dedicate them to that because acrylic gets, you know, in the ferrule and wears down brushes. And I, it'd be tough to go back and forth. Um, I, but I think that they would, they would hold up well against acrylic in a fluid, not, not for heavy body. They're too soft for that. But in fluid paint, they'd be a, a really lovely brush. You know, but they're flagged and they and they have some nice belly on them and everything. It's they're pretty actually very cool. Guys, this was fun. What a great mystery class. Next week, 32 watercolor techniques that you can do. That you can do. Not just that I can do, that you can do. And then no. People are like, how many watercolor techniques do you know? And you're like, for sure 32. For sure. 32. For sure. And you want to know why it's 32? Because that's how my page is divided on eight techniques per page. <laughs> and then I was like, is 50 too many? And then I was like, oh, I can't, I can't do 50 because I've got to do in segments of eight. And then I started singing the, in, the in, inchworm song. You know, yeah. inchworm, inchworm, measuring the marigold. So I'm like, four and four, eight, 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 e
Here's what we did earlier on the Strathmore. So I, again, it's not bad. It just has some sizing problems sometimes as you're going like here, it was beautiful, but over here kind of got a little, kind of got a little sketchy and you gotta be like, all right, but that's fine. Cause sometimes these tech, I don't want to say it's a happy accident, but any material that you know well and you know what it will do is a good material for you. No matter what it is for anybody else, right? Like as long as you know what's going to happen and you can use what's going to happen as a technique, you're fantastic. Yeah. So we've got this and this. That's your mystery class for today. You learned a thing. Can't wait to see how well it goes. See you next week. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I'm going to see you at an easel really soon.